being a techie and if you have not heard about the term web 3.0 then you might be living under a rock or maybe you're just not following the trend let's try to understand what is web 3.0 which everyone is talking about and how it might change the internet let's get started the agenda for this particular video is simple we are going to see the evolution of the internet or the web we call it the web 1.0 2.0 and 3.0 we are going to see an evolutionary architecture on how the web evolved i'll give you some examples of how the web 1.0 looked like how 2.0 is currently and then how we envision that the web 3.0 would look like we are going to see that with an architectural example i'll also overlay with some real time examples wherever necessary so that you can understand the context much better then we will go deep into what is decentralized applications or dapps we call them so how do these dapps correlate with the web 3.0 space and the blockchain ecosystem we are going to look at that in the next step we will dig deep into the architecture which we saw in the first slide finally we will look at a case study on deploying youtube in the blockchain network and how you can correlate to different components within the whole blockchain ecosystem to get your youtube application up and working finally i'll just summarize what we just discussed in this particular video getting deep into the evolution of the internet the web 1.0 looked something like this we had browsers which were connected to back end servers which were just retrieving information these informations were just retrieved and we had only read only information for example there were websites like britannica um, encyclopedia which used to give information so people used to go to the internet just to go and look up what is present inside some websites so i'm just giving an example of one particular website which is the britannica encyclopedia which used to be like the central hub for searching information and you can understand and then learn from the internet that's the whole web 1.0 stack so you had read only information in the internet you could go and browse through the internet and then search for stuff which you wanted to understand and there were specific institutions which used to manage these infrastructure and also the data around them so they used to add data in the back and we used to see that data using our browsers coming to the web 2.0 2.0 is much evolved compared to the web 1.0 where we had both reads and writes so we had multiple devices in the current day trend for example we have browsers we have mobile applications we have speakers we have TVs all these connect to a back end system or we call them APIs and these APIs interact with something in the back where we have all these stored or we process them for some reason or the other this is what we call the web 2.0 a classic example of applications in the web 2.0 is like starting with wikipedia where in wikipedia you as a user can go and modify it unlike the britannica encyclopedia where only the britannica team could edit it in the wikipedia space you can as a user go and edit information and you can get that back so there is both reads and writes which is happening inside the web 2.0 space also we do have applications like the microsoft office which is completely web based we have youtube we have uh, facebook which is the meta space um, and also other websites which are specific to individual institutions and all these are managed by individual institutions right for example youtube is managed by google and then same with meta which is managed by facebook so this is how the whole web 2.0 stack looks like now if you need to connect to any web application hosted on the internet right now which is 2.0 you need to have it hosted which will be managed by one central entity which is going to host your infrastructure or the website and you have a way to modify and edit information and also read information from the website so that's what web 2.0 stack is and all the current day devices which we use all falls into this particular stack now coming to web 3.0 which is going to be the evolutionary change in the whole internet let's look at how does that look like we have the same devices which we are talking to and we do have some integrations with other devices like the ar and the vr which again facebook is talking about something called as metaverse maybe we can talk about that in a separate video however these are some of the clients which we say are going to connect to the internet again we will have back end servers which are going to be exposed via apis or uis etc and they will interact with some different blockchain networks which are interconnected and these blockchains are managed by decentralized organizations called as daos or decentralized autonomous organizations these organizations are composed of people or group of institutions 
which form a particular blockchain network and then you can add more users to it or maybe reduce the number of users or keep the users to a minimal and then make them secure by controlling the whole application and its ecosystem within this particular network. So for example, you might host a website called techprimers.com and then I have that techprimers.com, I can post some tutorials in techprimers.com. Now the techprimers.com is managed by me and few other individual community members and the whole website is managed by the whole community driven approach. So this is completely decentralized. So it won't be stored and all the decision making will be shared across the parties within that particular network or the organization. Now even if I decide to take something down, I cannot do that without majority of the participants agreeing for a particular feature or a change. Now that's how the whole decentralized autonomous organizations are going to function. So without multiple parties concern and majority stake, you cannot change something within that network. So essentially you are taking your application and deploying it into something called as a blockchain network where you have decentralized approach in terms of managing that application and its data. So instead of storing everything in a database or a backend system like we did in the web 2.0, we are moving that into the blockchain so that it's secure and you have a way to retrieve it and then control it in terms of using a decentralized way. That's what the whole blockchain and the web 3.0 space is. Now, if you ask me an example of an application which is built on the web 3.0 space, there is a website called Odyssey. It's not a website. It's basically a streaming platform like YouTube. So you have uh, Odyssey where you can synchronize even YouTube videos. Even I have a channel there, which is Tech Primers, the same channel. Whatever video I post in YouTube, it gets synchronized there and the whole ODC functions in a decentralized form. We are going to see that example as a case study in the next slide. But finally, in order to differentiate the web 2.0 and the web 3.0, there is one more deciding factor which is called tokenization. Now you would have heard about cryptocurrencies, which is very popular these days. Those cryptocurrencies are an outcome of the whole blockchain network which you are functioning in. For example, in ODC, the platform which I'm just explaining, there is a cryptocurrency called as LBRY, the library, right? Earlier it was called as library and then they renamed it to ODC. So there is a cryptocurrency called library because you need to have a way to monetize the creators and also the viewers. So the differentiation between web 2.0 and web 3.0 is when you use web 2.0, you don't have a way to earn money out of it unless or until it's provided as a service or something else, you don't get paid for it. A classic example is you watch a YouTube ad or a Google ad, but you don't get paid for it. Only the creators get paid for it. Unlike that, in Web 3.0, even the viewers get paid for it and also the creators get paid for it. And even the people who are in the network who mine, they get paid for it. Now let's consider I am a part of the DAO organization. Now I need to have a way to monetize my usage. So I will be paid for individual transactions or individual videos in this case let's say uh, in the techprimers.com blockchain i want to post a new tutorial now that tutorial will be secured using individual blocks and i will be paying a transaction cost for the DAO. now the DAO is functioning with that particular cost i will also give some benefit for the viewer and also the creator right so the creator gets monetized based on the views and the viewers also gets monetized based on how much he is viewing so if you see a classic example of this in real time is brave browser if you are using the Brave browser you are already getting paid uh, a token called as bat which is again a cryptocurrency called as basic attention token so you are getting paid with that token for viewing ads which are played in the brave browser so the web 3.0 is almost changing the way we developed apps and then used apps inside web 2.0 where we never got paid for viewing something but in the web 3.0 space, you are getting a three-way benefit in terms of viewership, creatorship and also the publisher, which is the DAO or the content publisher. So this is what web 3.0 is all about. Now let's go into a deeper look into the web 3.0 architecture, how it looks like within the blockchain and how our applications are going to interact with the blockchain network because that's what is the key, right? I mean, it's very difficult to just view at a high level. Now let's go inside how it works. Let's take an example of a browser. You have a client here. I'm just mentioning it as client. Imagine it as a browser or a web app or whatever. It interacts to a UI application and the UI interacts to a backend. Now that's not going to change at all. 
Now the backend applications are going to connect to blockchain networks. These blockchain networks are interconnected. Now if you see here, I'm just showing a three um, layered network. So these are three different nodes provided by three different entities or partners. So I have three different partners as a part of the whole blockchain network. Now I want to interact from the backend to the blockchain network. Now how can I do that? I cannot directly do that. I will have to use something called as a node server. Here I'm just mentioning it as a blockchain node server. You have to have an intermediary node server using which you can connect to the blockchain network. So there are different third party applications like Infura, QuickNode or even Alchemy. These are different third party providers which provides APIs using which you can interact with a Ethereum based blockchain. So here I am going to show an example of an Ethereum based blockchain. So Ethereum is one implementation of the blockchain, something similar to Bitcoin. So Ethereum is another way in which you can implement the blockchain technology with its core. So I'm using Ethereum as an example in this particular video. So now the backend can interact with the blockchain node server because the blockchain node server will have to connect with the blockchain network. And from the blockchain node server, we interact with the blockchain network. Now the backend servers interact with the blockchain network using the blockchain node server. Now what happens within the blockchain network, right? Within a blockchain network, like I mentioned, we are going to use the Ethereum uh, blockchain. So in the Ethereum blockchain, we have something called as the Ethereum virtual machine. This is similar to the Java virtual machine. So Ethereum has its own VM and on the VM, we can run something called as smart contracts. So smart contracts are business logics, which you can run over the Ethereum blockchain. And underneath the Ethereum VM, you have the whole blockchain technology, which is the blocks which are stitched together in terms of transactions. So that's what the whole uh, diagram is depicting here. So you have the Ethereum VM and underneath you have different blocks. These blocks could be storing any piece of information, any uh, metadata, etc. Right? This could be ranging from your cache specific information or even document specific information. Now smart contracts are the logics using which you can persist these within the Ethereum VM. I hope this is enough at a high level to understand the whole blockchain network. Now let's move on to the next part. Now how does my backend interact with the whole blockchain network, right? It needs to have a signer key because you know that the transactions within the blockchain are secure. So you will have to have a key using which you can sign your application. So you need to have a private key using which you can encrypt your data. And also if let's say you have um, earnings, right? For example, I just talked about the tokenization. Now as a part of the whole uh, blockchain ecosystem, you earn some tokens. Now, the moment you earn some token, you will have to store these tokens, right? So how do you store these tokens, right? There is something called wallets, which you will be creating and using these wallets, you can store these tokens. Now, these wallets are available for us in the UI. Now, how does these wallets function? It's simple, right? I mean, they are connected to the blockchain. So they do get data from the blockchain and then they do have a state which is stored in the wallet and these wallets are connected from the backend. They use signer to create new transactions within the whole blockchain network and also they do store critical information or the metadata information in the database. Now this database is not the source of truth. The source of truth is the Ethereum blockchain here but if we need some specific information for the user to be displayed or maybe the user specific information or some metadata specific to the user or the application those all can be stored in the database and the key transaction information can be stored within the Ethereum blockchain. Now you can ask me Ajay, I can directly store that in a database. Isn't that fair? Yeah, it's completely fair to store transaction information in the database. The point here with the web 3.0 architecture is you are creating a decentralized network using which individual networks are owned by different partners and they are controlled in tandem. These are all connected and different users across these networks can interact with these particular blockchain network via different backend or different UI and they all can work together. For example, let's say I develop an application called as Tech Primers, right? The Tech Primers UI is connected to a backend tutorials uh, blockchain network. Now this tutorials blockchain network is connected with different tutorial provider. Let's take an example of Udemy, right? And also there is, let's say something, some other edu edutech company which comes and says, I also want to be part of the blockchain network. Now all these are part of the same blockchain network. They all share the same information about the tutorials, but the way they can show that to the user can vary. So they can build their own backend and they can build their own UI, which can retrieve data from the same blockchain network, and then they can show that to the user. 
the same way they can write it back to the blockchain network and that gets synchronized to all the users within the network so even if a guy from udemy adds a new tutorial i should be able to view that in the techprimers.com so that's the whole idea of the web 3.0 architecture half of these stacks are already there for example the ui backend and the database these are all already there the new one is the intermediary blockchain network which is decentralized and connected to different partners so that's the whole web 3.0 architecture now let's dig deep into the case study of understanding how i can deploy youtube inside the whole blockchain network using web 3.0 so i'm going to just draw the same to a major extent for example i'm going to use a browser or a mobile application to connect to my um, youtube application which is going to be deployed in the blockchain network so i have a ui which i can access from the browser and i also have a backend api which i can access from my mobile app right again the same backend connects to a third party service the third party service connects to a blockchain network now this again i'm using the ethereum based blockchain as an example now the difference here would be um, you will have an individual signer so youtube is creating a ui and this application is called youtube so so they have a signer which is specific to the youtube um, uh, app right which will be specific to youtube and then again youtube provides a way for you to monetize ads uh, etc via a wallet right so you can store or earn credits or tokens using um, youtube and then you can store that in the wallet now the differentiating factor here is you will have to store youtube videos right these videos are heavy and how do you store these videos now i need to have a file system which is again needs to be decentralized i don't know if you have heard of this um, uh, file system called as ipfs so ipfs is interplanetary file system this is the decentralized file system using which you can store data and retrieve data from anywhere so similar to how you have blockchain network for storing transactions you have a file system which is completely decentralized and connected via peer to peer network and you can store videos and you can retrieve them so if i want to build youtube within a whole blockchain i cannot store the video within the blockchain uh, block or the transaction instead i will store those data in the ipfs file system and then use the blocks to have a way to access these ipfs right so individual blocks could have metadata information and these could be accessed by connecting to the blockchain network and then i can get those metadata information connect to the ipfs file system and then retrieve the video file and then stream it in the ui this is how you can build youtube using blockchain now what information is stored in the database here we do have metadata information and the ipfs stores the videos like i mentioned and in the ethereum blockchain we store the ownership and also the rewards so the blockchain will show who owns that particular video and you can retrieve it only via the ethereum blockchain and then use that information to retrieve it in the ipfs and then show that to the user so this is how you can build a streaming platform in blockchain so similar to how you have built a streaming platform you can build any platform using this whole architecture now just replace youtube with something else you can just build the same thing instead of ipfs maybe you might not use IP, ipfs or maybe you can use some other technology right or maybe you can um, if let's say you have multiple uh, apis exposed right in that case you might even add the graph protocol to expose those apis in a decentralized form so graph protocol is a project um, in the whole um, blockchain space which can act as a uh, gateway for connecting different apis using the decentralized protocol so you can use that or maybe you can use polygon to have it run as a side chain and you can scale your blockchain which is the ethereum based blockchain to make it much more scalable now let me summarize what we just discussed we saw the evolution of the internet in terms of web 1.0 2.0 and 3.0 and the 3.0 is getting built and people call it 3.0 because ethereum created this whole concept of web 3.0 using which you can create applications and deploy applications and have them controlled in a decentralized form we saw the web 3.0 architecture deep dive we also created a d app something like techprimers.com which was deployed over the whole web 3.0 architecture and finally we discussed the case study of building youtube using the same web 3.0 architecture i hope this particular video would have made a lot of clarifications about the web 3.0 and how you can deploy applications on the blockchain and simplifying its architecture to a greater extent as always if you like the video go ahead and like it if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it meet you again in the next video 
थैंक यू वेरी मच